one and all to another premium spirits review as we review Glenn Fittick 12 Year Sherry Malt. I am the devilishly handsome outlaw himself, your king of extreme, Phil KOE, joined by my indomitable broadcast partner in inebriation, Tony fucking G. Like, share, subscribe. KOE Nation, Big Bucket Entertainment, Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast, Dog and Chicken Show, so, so many places to find your boys, Tony, Phil, and of course, Chicken, and so many others, but here tonight, right now, we are going to do something wonderful for you, because that's what we do. The Glenfiddich 12 is the Speyside version of one of my favorite cask maturation combinations in a single malt scotch. Okay. And that is a combination of ex-bourbon barrels and sherry casks. And so this is the Glenfiddich Speyside 12 year. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the low end of the Glenfiddich line. Yes. I have a bottle of the Glenfiddich 14 on my shelf. You've got... 15 and 18 on your shelf. I do, sir. We are pining a bit and planning a bit to grab some Glenfiddich higher end. We will see. Stay tuned. Keep your eyes on the space, folks. But this is the go-to age statement of the Glenfiddich line. What can we learn from this? This is going to tell us what the house style is. Uh, yep. What I love about uh, Glenfiddich is, like I said, they use 12 years in Olosoro uh, Sherry and Bourbon Casks. There we go. Let's okay. get there. Before mellowing in Oak Marion Turns. So they really try to mellow this out. And So what you're you've saying... You've been a lover of... Uh, so, excuse me, but you've been a lover of Speyside for yep. many years. Yep. I'm a lover of Highlands. We've kind of had a friendly back and forth okay. over it. Uh, Glenfiddich is the closest house style to my palate. It, it, it teeter-totters a bit. Uh, one of the things I want to note for those who don't typically buy scotch and they're just kind of wandering the aisle trying to figure out which one to pick up. Uh, out of the Glenfiddich line, I believe this is the only one in the dark green glass. Yes. Which typically suggests a highly peated scotch. Yep. Keep that in mind when you are purchasing your scotch. If you're not familiar with your, your brands and your flavors, dark green does typically suggest a high peat when buying scotch. I don't think that's necessarily the case here, but... Yeah. That usually is. Not generally with a space side. They're right. known for being a little sweeter and honey uh, there. They're seen as the sweet big brother to the uh, Highlands. So which, which surprises me why they double down on the dark green glass bottle. But I don't think it makes a bit of a difference. Because this is a... Very sweet. It's very sweet. There's some honey... It's wouldn't be a space side if it didn't have some honey. It, exactly, but it does have a, a, a honey whiskey nose. It's not complex. It's not overbearing. It just has a subtle honey whiskey, familiar Scotch nose. Ah, marvelous. So it is good. This particular uh, Scotch we're going to grade on four levels. Four. Okay. Single malt Scotch. Scotch, brown spirit, and shelf. Okay. So, before we get there, though, bottoms up, sir. Mmm. Mmm. <sighs> yep, there it is. Mmm. That is smooth. It's a malted honey. It's very, very, very smooth. Uh, the initial hit... Very soft, but it quickly turns into a bite. But that bite quickly subsides. I was about to say, I'm not getting so much bite just as much as I'm getting... It's... it's if you're familiar with reading music, it's a sharp note. It's there, and then it's gone. 
Mm. Like a harpsichord versus mm-hmm. a piano. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I, I could actually understand that. Um, it's or, very nice. So, as a single malt scotch, sir. As a single malt scotch, I will give this a 3.25. This is a fantastic age statement introductory brand that you could definitely introduce people to scotch with. Uh, They're not going to be offended either way on the flavor or the nose, and you could easily drink a bottle of this before you realized you were in trouble. Yeah, that's the problem with sherried malts. Um, That's why I'm going to give it 3.75 as a single malt. Uh, I'm, I'm impressed. Now, I do tend to like things from the northern end of Scotland, so... Fair. What can you do? <coughs> Excuse <laughs> me. Um, as a Scotch, introducing somebody to the concept, the idea, or just stacking up against all the single malts, single grains, and blended Scotches. Mm. It's very nice. It's a, it's a familiar taste. It's a familiar nose. It's, it's not one that's going to turn people away from drinking scotch. This is a very, it's a very solid introduction to scotch. I, I, I don't see any interpretation of this particular that would turn somebody away. On ice, on the rocks, uh, with water, you wouldn't want to cocktail it. But yeah, I, I, this is a, it's a nice familiar introduction. So I will go three and a half. Three and a half as a scotch. Yeah. I'm going to stick with 375 for this scotch as a scotch okay. because it does stack up well. <sighs> All right. And I would use this as an introductory if I didn't have one of my preferred brands. Okay. Now, okay. moving on to brown spirits. This one, I got uh, feeling it's going to suffer a bit. Okay. Mm. I'll be honest, I wouldn't cocktail this. No, you couldn't cocktail this. And I exp- might cook with it a little bit. I think you could cook with it. I don't know why you would. There's many, many other better options to cook with. And cocktailing is pretty much out the window. I I don't see... The rocks? I, no, I just I don't see any reason you would cocktail this. If you're going to cocktail this, it would have to be very, very, very light. And... You're essentially still cutting it with with water, so I, I don't even see the necessity for it at that point. So, for me, cocktailing is kind of out the window. I'll I'll give this a three on a brown spirit scale. I'm gonna give it three two five. Uh, that's in my opinion more than fair. Uh, I I think you you could use this as a base, but I I could think of others that I would go to before this. Yes, yes. So. Uh, Excellent, excellent single malt scotch. Yeah. Uh, but yes, I would not cocktail it. No. I wouldn't uh, maybe cook with it, but small doses. That's I'll, I'll say this out, out of the gate right now. Glenfiddich has, out of most of the brands that we have sampled, age statement to age statement to age statement, I've been most impressed... With the fact that Glenn Fetich has found a way to actually incorporate a true jump from age statement to age statement to age statement. I don't think there's been one that stood out more than Glenn Fetich in terms of increasing, leveling up, if you will, year by year by year. 12 to 14 to 15 to 18. I, I would give you that. Uh, like, even... The 14 to the 15 have tremendous differences. Yes, yes. That content is coming soon, folks. So, but, uh, so Tony, shelving. This is a, this might be a bit controversial, but I would put this probably next to my Chivas Regal on the middle shelf. You know, as much as I hate to agree, I'm going to agree. This is a great middle shelf uh, single malt scotch. Great 12 year. I love the cast maturation. It really yeah. works. Uh, but yeah, you're correct. Uh, 
what what can I say? Uh, but yeah. yes, Glenn Fittick, uh, especially for the price, you can get these usually uh, under forty bucks. So. Oh, well, there you go. And and that's another thing with the entire line. I think you're getting enough of a diverse selection from the entire line, price wise to price to age statement that it makes perfect sense. Sometimes with some of these different names and brands, you you don't get the same diversity and the same improvement with uh, pricing. I think Glenn Fittich has a nice evened out base. Yeah, and trust me, the more you spend with them, the more you get with each bottle. But There you go. So, <clears throat> we came to uh, some agreements here on the space side. I'm still a uh, lover of the Highlands, but I can come over to the space side once in a while, T. But we have many, many more space sides to explore. we got the 14, the 15, the 18, potentially some experimentals. We'll see down the line, folks. Keep your eyes on this space. But now, Tony, as I'm going to say. Go ahead. All that being said, folks, this has been our review of Glenn Fittick 12 year single malt space hide scotch. I am the devilishly handsome outlaw himself, your king of extreme, Phil KOE, signing off and handing it off to my indomitable broadcast partner, Tony Fucking G. Stay right here. This is where you need to be. All this and more to come. Thanks for joining us.